Hello everybody, back for another installment of Developing This Concertina. Something was bothering me about this book, even though I like some of these pages um, uh, quite a bit. And it occurred to me when I was um, talking to you in the last video what it is. It's that this doesn't match with the back side. Not match is not the right word, but let's just review quickly this. These pages are dark, um, darkish and smoky and kind of there's grayed areas. Um, there was a lot of charcoal and there was um, ink underneath, I think, that um, made it this way. And I did not do both sides. I think I'm learning as I go with this. I think what I should have done was to develop both sides um, at the same time. But I think that's what I'm missing here is this kind of grayed area here. And if you look at how grayed those are, and some of these are still bright ur pages, but they've still got grayed areas in them. So if you compare that then with what I've started doing here, this is quite bright. This is very bright. So I think that this is gonna be a fairly simple matter to change this out a little bit. I've been trying to decide how I wanna go about doing that. But these are too bright to make it a cohesive part of that. So I think I'm gonna start maybe just with this page. And because I have this white paper here and I kinda of want that to stay white, I think I'm going to just gently, excuse me, and blow out my gloves here. I'm going to put a piece of paper underneath that first page. It's so easy to forget that something is happening on the other side. So I'll just put a piece of paper under there. And I think in this case, I'm just going to take some you know, I sort of want to use some black ink, but it won't stick over this um, liquid acrylic, and then that would also flow over this white, which might be all right. But I'm not willing to play with that right here because I do want to resolve or save at least some of that. So I'm going to use instead a very liquidy black. I'm sure you've seen me use this before. This is um, black paint that I have um, diluted with... Um, airbrush medium until it's like water. Uh, it's important to use airbrush medium rather than water for a couple of reasons. It won't go moldy and it will stick to the acrylic. It does separate, so you need to kind of stir it up some when you get started again. And let's see what this is gonna do. if I should maybe, no, no, I'm just gonna, oh yeah, see that is very reminiscent of what would happen if I went over this with ink. So let's see, oops, I can just, at least to there. And take a piece of fresh paper towel here. Oops. <laughs> so it's gonna be a back and forth sort of a game. If I turn this this way, I'll have a better angle at getting that edge done without it being too peculiar. And that's getting a little bit of a hard edge on it because I let it sit too long. So what do I wanna do maybe? me sometimes a while to figure out I'm gonna lose what happened with that cool um, wax there the wax resist that was way underneath so let's see I just brush that out well it makes quite a bit of difference but I don't think I want it quite so maybe so that knocked everything back quite a bit
paper, and I got black on my white paper again. So that's not going to come off of there either. I guess it dried already. Okay, that's fine. Maybe what I could do. Hmm, I'll have to decide. Maybe I'll touch that up with some white, or maybe I'll just. I've got my paper right here, so what would happen if I just kind of was brave? Let's see. That's kind of interesting, too. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that for now. I can always touch it up with white later if I feel the need to. So I feel better about this page as far as a cohesive part of this. I think that, let's see if I can open it out to a spot where you can see them side by side. It just has more of the same feeling. Kind of older, more distressed. Um, let's see, what do I want to do here? I'm wondering if I can apply this with a paper towel instead of a brush, or maybe put it on with a brush and rub it around with a paper towel. Let's see what happens then. I kind of want to preserve my whites, but let's see what happens if I do something kind of like that. Oops. Oh, that's kind of cool, though. A little more distressed, really, with a little bit of... Well, there you go. See, I'm being so careful, and it turns out it looks better if it's... Why did that go into that fast? I don't mind that it's on it. I just didn't want a hard edge, so maybe if I... There, that helps some. Um... And let's make sure that this flows from one side to the other in a similar shade, similar value. Feeling better about this page now, too. Oops, working away off camera again. Got a little bit of a white edge there, so I'm just trying to, maybe what I need to do is open this up this way so that they once again flow. drying so quickly I don't seem to have to worry about it. I do want a little bit more. I kind of soften those edges on both of these other squares so I kind of want to do that here too just have a similar treatment because it kind of it's giving it sort of a distressed look to me which I like. Sorry about the shaking camera. Let's see, and on this one, I wonder if I, currently this is my focal point. So I'd want to kind of knock back, so let's start over here. And you know what else I'm thinking is I'd like to start adding a little bit of brown into this as well, to give it sort of a, more of a patinaed look, so let's get a little, this is just a yogurt top. I'm going to put a little dot of this uh, Van Dyke Brown 
And I'm going to bring some of this here as well. And let's see what happens if we mix those together. Well, it certainly is dark. Wow, that's way darker than what I intended it to go. Quick thinking in a spray bottle saves the day again. a little too. So I've got a nice focal point right there. So maybe mark that back a little too. Okay. And this page is not quite as bad because probably because of that underneath, but it's still got I think I just need to rub some stuff in here. So let's see rather than painting it on, because I found that that was just too much. Look at that as in conjunction with the page before again. It's darker than the other page. This is my focal area right here. That's still quite white there. I don't want to lose those numbers, but I want to knock it to back and just stain it some. to knocking my glass of water over so let's see focal point here on this I need to leave some white near it somewhere probably asking me about the spray bottle today. This is a um, fine mist spray bottle. You can get them on Amazon for, um, they're used by hairdressers. So it has a bladder inside of it that you fill with water and the, the mist is very fine if you can see that. It's not, uh, you know, like a regular spray bottle will really give you quite a blast. This one is easier to get a finer mist. I don't even use a regular spray bottle anymore. That's interesting. I wonder what would happen if I sanded that a little bit. Got some fine grit sandpaper here and oh, that probably should be dry. But let's see what happens. A little too brush strokey for me. Gives it a nice patina. Okay, I like that. I think I might revisit that, see if I need to add a little bit of bright, bright white over here. I feel like I might maybe even just a 
What about like a white dot? Um, do I have any? I didn't paint on that one. No. Hmm. the same thing or do I want to use something this is different I've got um, uh, binder reinforcing thingies let's see what these look like okay this is one of those deals where you pull it and it pops a label out of the top and I keep forgetting that so what if we just kind of stuck a few of these on and see what we think I've had trouble getting these to stick. Now I can't get it up. So I kind of... Sort of lined up. Well, I don't think they're doing any harm. So I'll leave it like that for now. Until I put uh, clear acrylic over the top, I'll be able to just... Uh, peel them right back off again if I want to. I think it draws your eye even a little bit more to the focal point. So that's all the pages that I thought were done. <laughs> and now, hmm. Okay, sandpaper. I'm kind of imagining that if you're going to be doing a lot of this, you probably should have on some, um, a mask, because it is plastic particles. Help some. I think I went too far with my black stuff here. So it's always the give and take, back and forth, add in, take away. Now another thing that I can do here, I have the same thing with a white paint. And the reason I don't use acrylic inks like this is in my experience, acrylic inks beat up uh, over the top of acrylic paint. So they're just not quite I haven't used this for a while and it's gooey in the bottom. They are not, um, they don't have the same binder or something. So I think that they're, there's a little bit of a problem with adhesion over the top and they bubble up just like adding watercolor over the top of plastic. So I could, I was thinking, um, add clear gesso over the top of this and that would solve all those issues. I could use uh, charcoal and ink and everything, anything over the top of that again. And I'm gonna experiment with that in a little bit. But right now, what would happen if I tried to just rub some more white into that? If I can do it without it making it too much. Yeah, that helps some too, I think. So it gives it that patina that I feel like the other side had. Not quite the same, but that's okay. This is all still experimentation and play. There, I feel better about that, I think. And what about the 
this page. I'm gonna just rub some brown into it. Especially right there. Something about those white spots are drawing my attention more than my focal point. That's not good. Oops, I don't think I've got the lid on that right. So I'm gonna get a little bit more Van Dyke Brown here. happen if I went over that with just a little bit of white and just in a few places it really um, layers always make things more mysterious and oh, I wish I hadn't gone over that yellow let's see if I can that's not too bad I feel better about that now. Let's see. That's enough for me to leave it for now. That got interesting. This page is needing stuff. I think what this page needs actually, uh, maybe some more brown or some brown. I don't know that it has any. Look how beautiful it is with that blue. I really liked that kind of, well, that's an area that had green in it, wasn't it? And I just didn't know, I didn't like it and I didn't know what to do with it. And so now I still, having trouble with it. So what about a little bit of something over the top? Like, different kinds of circles? Or, that would be too dark, let's see. Going with the idea of more marks like this, but I think I need something to just deepen the interest here first. I think I want some of this um, newsprint sort of um, tissue paper. So let me go find it and I'll be right back. All right, I didn't find that, but I have this stuff that's like a postcard. That's kind of cool too. I've got to figure out how to organize this stuff. <clears throat> Maybe if I scrunch that up a little. Find a way to put it on there. Maybe sort of like that would be good. So put this, cover this up before I knock it over. Okay. 
paper is also, I think, in French, which is kind of interesting because I can't, you can tell it's words, but I at least cannot read it. So it makes me wonder some more. And that always, to me, is an interesting, oh, that's too thick, an interesting um, thing in art. Anything that makes me want to look closer, step in to step out, to wonder, to make me curious, to, um, yeah, I guess I'll go over those. I'll probably still come off if I really don't like them, but I think I like them. Okay, so even just that right there made this more interesting. Now I've got a restful area and this that is kind of moving in and that integrates into that because of the brown. I think that's good for now. Let's see, I didn't want to make this video too long. I should have been paying attention to how long I spent uh, before I stopped the video, because now I can't tell without stopping the video again. So let's look at one more page here and see, get sandpaper out of the way, see what more I want to do with that. Um, I think it might be time for me to stop and try some clear gesso. This will be a, uh, maybe I'll do that on the next page. So what could I do here? Maybe, I mean, I've got some of that already. How about, get more of that. We like it. That little pop of uh, peach is kind of interesting. I want it to go over this a little bit because that area of lavender got a little bit dull. And maybe what if that came down this way some? This is some. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> tissue paper that I put into some wet paint and stuff uh, that I had on another bit of paper. It was, it got really thick. And so I just, uh, to sop up some of the extra paint, I just stuck the tissue paper right into it. And it made some really interesting marks. Maybe, let's see. Oh, <laughs> sticky fingers. I think, oh, there's more of that peachy color. I'm gonna want that somewhere else too. So how about that right there? thinking I needed something more up in here just to keep that kind of spotty oops didn't really want that to fold over but it did and it's too late now Here maybe and going over onto the other page yeah and then I'll let that dry and I'm gonna put some um, clear gesso on this you don't need to watch me do that I don't think um, if you aren't familiar with it I will show it to you before I sign off here and let this dry I I got a lot of stuff on there it is a wonderful product Oh, you know what? What I have is just in another squirty bottle like this. So um, it is clear and it has grit in it. It's, it's grittier than most gessos. So you don't want to use your good brushes when you use it uh, because it will tear them up. I really like to use a gesso magic tool to put it down 
Oh, sure. And I don't have my little gesso magic tool in a spot where it's... Oh, yeah, I do here too. This is a little silicone thing coated in plastic, and it's really great for spreading gesso and uh, other mediums on. It doesn't matter if it gets dirty because eventually that stuff will peel off again. Uh, rarely does that redeposit. It shouldn't if it's acrylic and it's dried. If I have picked up charcoal, sometimes I'll get a little bit of a black smudge, but eh, oh well. So what I would do to put that on, I can show you that. I've got enough room here, I think. Yeah. Still got to find the product though. Here it is. So it's thick like matte medium. Same, um, and it goes on white. I'm gonna do a couple of pages here at least because I want some flow to get going. It goes on um, translucent and it comes, it will dry clear. So it's fantastic for getting tooth back anywhere where you um, don't wanna lose what's below. Well, I've got way too much of this on here. So let me just start moving that down here, and I guess I'll do more than two pages. So the other thing I love about this particular tool is that I don't have to um, be crazy about cleaning either. It just wipes up. You know, I wipe it off, and you know, if there's some material still on it, it doesn't matter. All right, so I think you get the idea with that. Um, if you have a lot of charcoal or water-soluble media underneath it, it will move, especially if you go over it and over it like I'm doing. <laughs> so you might want to um, float some matte medium. I'm probably off camera again here too, but I've got a lot of wet pages now. Oops, stuck my thumb in it down at the other end. So, um, yeah, you may want to fix anything water-soluble with some uh, maybe glazing fluid or um, matte medium or something like that that you can float on with um, what I find works best is a silicone scraper of some kind. I've tried it with this. This works okay. But especially if I'm using a... Um, a large area or doing a lot of putting a lot of material on. I'm just gonna wipe this off and I'll show you the tool that I use as a color shaper. They come in a couple different sizes. I'm not sure what oh, there it is. And what I do um, with my glazing fluid or with my uh, matte medium is I just run a bead along the edge of the scraper if I'm going for a larger area and I very lightly skim it over the top. And you'll get a little bit of movement, if you have, but if you have a really light touch, you won't get very much. And it will um, fix your, fix your um, water-soluble marks so that they will no longer be water-soluble. All right, so I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you next time for more work on this concertina. Feel free to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to get um, notifications when I upload the next video.